In this video, we are going to do a heating cooling curve lab. So this is a graphing lab where you're gonna graph someone else's data uh, and then label everything. So it's pretty straightforward. The one thing I need to mention is there are two graphs and therefore two substances. The first substance is called substance X. Now, this didn't fit on the page. So what I had to do was I had to take one chart, which is time versus temperature, and then turn it into two, like split it in half and put it side by side. Otherwise it was too big for the page. So if you notice the time is gonna start here at zero, it's gonna go down to 16, then it's gonna continue over here to 33. And then the corresponding temperatures start here at seven, and then they do the same thing. They come over here and continue there. So it's really one chart, okay? So you have time and temp this way, and then it continues over here. I just couldn't put them in a straight line. Otherwise, they would have taken up the whole page, and I would have needed to make this a two-page lab. So that's pretty much it. Now, when we look at the back for substance Y, notice they're calling it substance Y, not substance X again. So one of the questions you're going to have to ask is, is substance Y and substance X the same substance? And one way you can identify that is by their boiling points. If their boiling points and freezing points aren't the same temperature, then they're not the same substance. And if they are the same temperature, then they are, um, they are the same substance. And the same goes with identifying if they're water or not. If they boil and freeze at the same temperature that water does, then chances are it's water. If they don't, then it's probably not. And so that answers all of those questions. I'm gonna now show you how to do the graph. So the graph for this, you're gonna set the graph up this way. I'm not gonna show you the whole graph because it's not gonna fit on the page. But here's your graph. Now, notice what I did. I put time on my X and I went by minutes. And the unit is minutes. You can fit that if you have room, you could put it a little lower. Uh, normally you don't write it off to the side like this. And I went by one box per minute and I turned it sideways because it wouldn't fit um, the other way. And I did this graph twice because I wanted to show you something. On my X, I was able to go by ones and I used like 80% of the graph. If you can see, I kind of went all the way, almost all the way to here, all right? So with temperature, in the first graph, I went by tens and it only got me a little bit more than halfway. Now. That would be fine, but when you do your graph, you, so you're gonna plot these, right? You would end up getting a heating cooling curve that only fits in this space. So your graph's only gonna be like, you know, that big. And so if you look at that, you're not really using the bulk of the page. So what I did was I rescaled it, and instead of going by tens, I went by sevens. And then the reason I did that was I used much more of the page. And there's an easy way of figuring this out. So to figure out my scale, it was very simple. I counted how many boxes I had. I figured out that the temperature had to go from zero up to roughly 200, which is the maximum temperature, and then I just divided. And so when I divide the total number of boxes, or 200 by the total number of boxes, I got six point something per box. Now, I'm not gonna count by decimal points, that's too much. So what I did was I rounded up to seven. Granted, be aware, the number was like 6.2. So 6.2 does not round up to seven, but here's the problem. If I rounded it down to six, then I'd actually, my top number would be like up here off the page and that wouldn't be useful. Or rounding it down to six would put the top number off the page and so I wouldn't be able to complete my graph. So by rounding up, even though it's not technically the way we round, I ensured that the graph fit on this page. And so I didn't use the top, you know, a couple boxes, but that's much better than the previous one. Now, when you graph these, you're gonna go, okay, at, um, I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna do something like this. At time zero, what was the temperature? Well, it was seven, so I put a dot there. At one minute, it was at 10, so I'm gonna estimate where 10 is and put a dot. And then at two minutes, it was 13, so I'm gonna estimate where 13 is and put a dot. And when you're done, you're gonna get something that looks Something like that. Obviously, I just estimated, I just drew it in. It won't look exactly like this, but it will have the steps and be your typical heating cooling curve. What you are going to label, remember, I want the phases labeled. I want you to draw the phase particles in. I want you to label the phases here, here, and here. I wanna know what direction we call that. What do we call that? What do we call that and that? I wanna know what this point represents, what this point represents, what this point here, 
and this point here represent, right? So there's everything. And then I'm also gonna wanna know, and you're gonna need this for the lab, what do we call this temperature at this flat part? And what do we call this temperature at that flat part? And then what do we call when we go in those directions up and down? So that should be everything that gets labeled on here. All right. Um, there is a color key. I believe this one wants you to, yep, color it. It wants you to color your liquids blue, for example, right? So all that means, this isn't crazy. All that means is when it's a liquid, you would just go over it with blue colored pencil. Now, I'm doing it right here to show you. This is where it's a liquid, right? But this is not the only place it's a liquid. It's technically liquid shows up right here at this corner and it continues all the way to this corner. So from here to here, it's liquid. But now if you notice, um, some of these are gonna overlap because if you look at the gases, right? When is it a gas? Well, we would say it's a gas up here. But is that the only place it's a gas? And the answer is no, it's not. It's technically a gas from this point over here. So what I'm gonna do is, I didn't use the right color just because I don't have a highlighter in that color, but um, I did it like that and I just have it overlapped. And that's why when we see this corner, we give it a special name because it's the first appearance of the orange. And when we see this corner, we give it another name because it's the last or the disappearance or the last bit of the blue, whatever phase the blue happens to be. I'll let you figure that part out. Um, but so when you do your coloring, it's going to look something like that. One thing I wanted to mention, be aware. See how I have two temperatures here, melting point and freezing point? They're going to be the same temperature because if you think about it, melting and freezing are going to happen on this flat part or this flat part. I'm going to let you figure that out. But whichever one it is, it's the same temperature whether you melt or freeze, or you could say whether you boil or condense, they happen at the same temperature, right? And so it looks like it's four numbers, but it's really not. Like for example, water, we know that water melts and freezes at zero. So if I was doing water, I would say that my water would melt at zero and it would freeze at zero because that's what it does. And then I would also say that water boils at 100 and condenses at 100 because it does. So you are gonna have these numbers are gonna repeat. Don't, don't think that, that it's wrong. It's just boiling and freezing are basically the same thing. I mean, melting and freezing are the same thing and boiling and condensing are the same thing. And then there's some questions on the bottom that I went over enough, you should be able to answer those. And so that is everything for this lab.